each of us has different roles on this planet. Because if we were all together the same, it would be perhaps a little bit boring. So this morning, I, I think we have what for me is the groundedness of our Temple of Light ministerial family. That quiet storm, that purposeful energy that we know together as Reverend Anne Shand. Please put your hands together and welcome her to the message this morning. Quiet storm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandy. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our center and especially those who have joined us through the World Wide Web. William James stated, and I quote, I will call this higher part of the universe by the name of God. We and God have business with each other. And in opening ourselves to his influence, our deepest destiny is fulfilled, end of quote. In this life's journey, to complete evolution as illumined beings, we are all fellow travelers. Our real selves as individualized expressions of the infinite, supreme living spirit. We share who we are with life and all of ourselves. Our true essence, our fragrance, the melodies within each one is what we give, embrace, and ultimately release in this incarnation. And it is this that makes our combined experience so enriching and ennobling. We must therefore live our spiritual truth in every aspect of our being. How do we do this? Dr. Holmes, our founder, reminds us of a spiritual practice we can utilize in order to live as spirit's highest ideal of who we are. He states, and I quote, an act of complete surrender of the human to divine. Without the loss of the human, it is an act of complete inflowing of the divine into the human, end of quote. Our teaching provides us various tools and practices that awaken us to our spiritual magnificence in order to create a world that supports everyone. This spiritual practice of surrender permits us to allow the divinity within to so permeate our beings that our emotions, thoughts, ideas, and actions are so harmonized into complete alignment with our highest and greatest good. Hence the title of my thoughts this morning is The Power Within Surrender. Our last set of classes were titled Five Gifts for an Abundant Life. Here gifts is an acronym for gratitude, intentions, forgiveness, tithing, and surrender, all part of the process of manifesting an abundant life. We contemplated and discussed the transformative power of gratitude, which engineers a joy and focus, which translates into the setting and manifesting of intentions that support our highest good. Therefore, forgiveness of self and others removes barriers that enable us to give our tithe of blessings, talents, capacities, love, and treasure to life, and thereby surrendering to the expression of a life more abundant, a life rich and opulent with opportunities to express the reality of our being as individualized emanations of the divine. When we surrender to the divine within, we are able to merge with the universal, enhancing our individuality to the point, and I quote, where a sense of the oneness of all life so enters our being that there is no sense of otherness, end of quote. It is here that mentality performs seeming miracles because there is nothing to hinder the whole from coming through. Surrender as a spiritual practice does not suggest the relinquishing of our uniqueness, our individuality to be swallowed up into that of an automatic clone. 
We know that for this earth plane, our humanity is the mode through which we cognize our divinity. So we must clearly evolve to a greater expression of our true divine selves. We do not yield to the conditions of the relative, but interpret life from the absolute. The attributes of spirit that we have in our DNA, life, love, light, power, peace, beauty, and joy. We do not submit or resign ourselves to living a life of less than, nor entertain defeat, powerlessness, giving up, inertia, lethargy, I don't care anymore, you win, I lose, or in the face of challenges or suffering, it is God's will. Surrender as we are taught as a practice is based on one, we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through the intuitive and spiritual nature of man, and that any man may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. We let go and let spirit do its perfect and perfecting work through us for the fulfillment of our true reality. The life of man is God and as a revealer of truth. We are willing to accept that, that that which is in us is greater than ourselves, and therefore that divine consciousness within is the way, the truth, and the life of our being. We understand that God's will for our lives is more than what our finite concept of ourselves can possibly conceive of. We surrender to a greater degree of happiness than we have ever known before, as well as to a greater good. We can, through spiritual practices, consciously come to the point when we realize that whatever the nature of God is, we are. Therefore, we are supported, maintained by a grace that is our all sufficiency. Joel Goldsmith reminds us that we can live from this basis, and I quote, I find my allness, completeness, and perfection in spirit, end of quote. Life as we know it and experience now changes to, I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me, Galatians 2, verse 20. I am going to suggest three ways in looking at the concept of the practice of surrender and steps to assist in each avenue that we can contemplate. The first one is looking at the methodology of surrender in, sorry, surrender in assisting in the setting and manifesting of our intentions. Here, surrender is as described in our Sense of Mind magazine for April in the article by Gregory Toole, and I quote, the bridge between manifesting and surrender is in the willingness to define what we want and to let go of attachment to how it shows up in form, end of quote. So here we define what we want, but we do not outline how it is to show up in our lives. In the setting or defining of what we want, we remind ourselves that since we are the channels through which God reveals itself, therefore what we want to experience flows from ideas, thoughts of God, thoughts that must benefit the cosmos, thoughts that are established from the attributes of spirit. It is our willingness to have these divine ideas manifest through us that enables us to be co-creators with spirit. As we open ourselves to the divine ideas, we consciously surrender to their manifestation without limits. And as Dan Harmony puts it, we dance in the realm of possibilities. Having complete faith and conviction that these ideas are part of our physical experiences, although not yet tangible. But with feeling, staying focused in certainty, living our affirmative prayer, because we know that the law operates on the impress of our ideas in it, and then physical demonstrations take place. Mr. Toole invites us in his article to, and I quote, when we practice surrender, our role is to be an effective vessel 
to create an open and expansive space within ourselves for spirit to express its infinite wisdom, creativity, love, and power. The practice of surrender involves letting go of the need to be in control and know how things are going to turn out. It calls for trust in that infinite intelligence that will yield a greater result than finite intelligence. It calls us to make a trade-off between the human comfort of believing that we are in control and the divine possibility of a greater fulfillment." End of quote. Dr. Roger Thiel, in the foreword of the book, Can We Talk to God by Dr. Holmes? This book, by the way, is to be used by the class on Thursday, Power of Your Word, which starts on, yes, Thursday morning. And it tells a story that is an illustration of what the, um, the principle of surrender I just um, pointed out to you. And it goes like this. A newspaper report demonstrates this in the experience of an elderly man who was challenged in resources yet rich in spirit. The sidewalk in front of his humble house was crumbling and no longer safe. However, he had no apparent means to replace it. Avoiding despair and drawing upon his spiritual riches, the man held his private talk with God, boldly declaring that it was high time for an answer. Following this prayer, he had his grandchildren haul away the broken concrete that he used, that, and then he used some boards to build new forms for the walkway. Then he declared, God, I have done my part. About 10 days later, a truck full of concrete drove down his street and tried to turn at his corner. But the truck was going too fast and overturned. <laughs> The workers had to offload the cement quickly before it hardened inside the truck. The elderly man simply stepped up onto his porch, pointed to the farms, and shouted, you can put the cement in here. Thank you, God. <laughs> the gentleman clearly defined his intention, got his guidance, the grandchildren executed, and then the rest was left to the law. This is empowering because he surrendered his intention to have new sidewalks to the law. And because he knew that the law would comply, he did not tell how he wanted the sidewalks to be manifested. All he did was place the forms in place, and the law produced the cement. The steps are, once you have defined the intention or idea that you would want to manifest in your life experience, you create new strategies to keep your mind focused on living the intention in your experience. The second part of that is each day, we change the tools we utilize to embody the intended experience. Today, we sing it. Tomorrow, we affirm it. The next day, it is in our affirmative prayer. The next day, we visualize it by feeling the feel of the intended experience in our daily lives. Make it an adventure, exciting. Let your imagination come alive. Thirdly, resist the temptation to outline or figure out how. Stay away from the arguments that say no. If that means secrecy of not telling anybody, it means secrecy. And in other words, anything that is not in consonant with that intention, you let it pass without engaging it and continue with new strategies to assist in the embodiment of that demonstration. In fact, you allow spirit to nourish at this time to keep us in total alignment with the fulfillment of the intended experience. The second approach to surrender as a spiritual practice can be used at the times as phrased in this Christian science hymn. The first two verses goes like this. O oh Lord, I would delight in thee, and on thy care depend. To thee in every trouble flee, my best, my ever friend. When all material streams are dried, thy fullness is the same. May I with this be satisfied, and glory in thy name." End of quote. Now when all material streams are dried, when our challenges seem almost insurmountable, how do we practice surrender as an empowering attitude rather than 
an air of resignation or defeat. Reverend Elmo used to tell a story that in a shipwreck, persons started to pray, and the phrase was, is this it gone to know? Prayer as a last resort. In the frame of mind that is anxious and full of despair, Emmett Fox in his book, as um, two weeks ago, I think, Reverend Michael took you through the golden key, instructs us to one, stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, think about God instead. Not so simple as at this time we are still in the frame of mind that produced the challenge. He goes on to say that we do not try to form a picture of God, but rehearse in mind everything you know about the attributes of God. God is wisdom. God is truth, love, peace, power. God is equally present everywhere and right where we are. Continue to keep the mind on these attributes until there is a shift in consciousness and then rest in the silence. The object is to drive the thought of the challenges right out of consciousness for a few moments at least. Once the consciousness is uplifted with the consideration of spiritual matters, then one can now surrender to the presence and power of God within. Use all the tools that resonate with the upliftment of our spiritual posture. Here, surrender is important as we keep our focus on what we do want to experience the opposite to the challenges, and do not outline or try to advance the possible solution in mind. Keep listening to the indwelling presence of the Almighty within, and then truly let go and let God. This is the time to train our minds to stay focused on the truth of our being. Choose the moods and feelings that keep us centered in peace, joy, and power. Sense the empowerment that comes from the life of man is God. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. Or, John 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Or, the fifth verse from that same Christian science hymn that I pointed to, he that has made my heaven secure will hear all good provide. While Christ is rich, can I be poor? What can I want beside? The result then, as Dr. Holmes reminds us, should we contemplate those things which are desirable and to forget the rest, we would soon overcome fear with faith. Both are mental. Let us learn to reverse the thoughts of fear and transmute them into faith. That is what the workshop is all about. The story is told in the movie, The African Queen, and, and the young ones probably would not have seen this one. The African Queen starring Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> The story goes like this, or the scene goes like this. Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn are exhausted after a long and grueling adventure down a troublesome river, overcoming terrible obstacles. Their boat is stranded on a dry riverbed, inestimably far from the ocean they have fought so hard to reach. Spent and knowing that they can do no more on their own behalf, the couple falls into deep sleep, prepared to surrender to death. As their eyes close, the camera slowly pulls to an aerial view that reveals that the ocean they have sought lies just beyond the next bend, but a few hundred yards away. Then a miracle happens. While the couple sleeps, rain comes, and in a short time, the river begins to flow again. By the time they awaken, the boat had floated to the ocean they believed was many miles away. They were closer than they thought. The object of that story is once we have done everything spiritually that we can possibly do, it is high time to surrender and accept the loving presence that incarnated us out of its being would through law manifest the desires of our heart. So let us summarize those steps. Stop the thoughts of difficulty. Ref 
refuse to entertain anything that is not constructive, supportive, mentally and spiritually uplifting. Two, surrender to the omnipresence within. And thirdly, listen to the inner guidance system which may come through any avenue of inspiration or expression. For example, it may come as a feeling, a hunch, through a book, through nature, a friend, maybe even in a dream. Follow through and know that the infinite presence and power is our reality and that this too shall pass away. There are also times when we are experiencing good and we are content and feel that this is satisfying, it is the ultimate. But when we seem settled in that groove, we can surrender to experiencing even greater good. A new way of experiencing the extraordinary and just simply let go of the old beliefs and stories and embrace a new way of being. The third approach to looking at the spiritual practice of surrender is as a tool for spiritual growth and attainment, deepening our awareness of our divine oneness, our realization of the presence within, living from the Christ consciousness, our hope of glory. We must therefore consciously commit to a daily regime that allow us to acquaint ourselves with the divine. As we understand the nature of God, we understand our nature as a spiritual being. The nature of God is first cause, intelligence, spirit, law. Qualities, omnipresence, equally present everywhere, omniactive, the only activity there is, omnipotent, the only power there is, omniscient, the only knowledge and wisdom there is. Its attributes are life, love, light, power, peace, beauty, and joy. As we study, contemplate this, and ultimately embody this, we understand that this is also our truth and reality. Through spiritual practices, we begin to truly know ourselves as how God knows us. Since God is intelligence, as we recognize that the intelligence of God permeates our consciousness, our in intellect, our perceptions are awakened to a higher awareness. We are incisive, we are sensitive, our comprehension skills deepens, our decision-making faculty is enhanced. In fact, all our faculties are sharpened. Transcendence is now in the realm of possibilities for us. Our bodies are truly temples of the living spirit, and all our affairs are made perfect as we truly awaken to who we are. This is not to be put off to retirement age, if there is such an age. But the time is now. Our youth are now being taught the same tools, and it is for us as caregivers for the next generation to facilitate the transmission of our teaching and principles to them. The more they practice is the better they are equipped they will the better equipped they will be to take their place in the ever evolving universe. So as we spend time with ourselves through meditation, visioning, dwelling in the silence, sacred service we usher in total transformation of our individual experiences as well as for global transformation. If I be lifted up, I will draw all others unto me. So in summary, what do we know? First, from Matthew 6, verses 33 to 34, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Secondly, John 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. Verse 34 says, Is it not written in your law, ye are gods? John 14 is full of assurances for us, especially verse 20. Ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. All those are words from our way sure, Jesus the Christ. We can therefore see our true selves in all other selves and not submit to race consciousness because we are revealers of truth and our life is the life of God. So as we surrender to remember who we are, let us begin, our, let us begin now in our simple practices 
to committing ourselves to be the individualized expressions of God. And, in, and this will always work to create a world that works for everyone. In summary, and my last verse that I leave with you, it seems from that same Christian science hymn. Oh God, I cast my care on thee. I triumph and adore. Henceforth my great concern shall be to love and praise thee more. Namaste. Oh,